Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 251. Unfortunately, this is not the 5th year anniversary yet. I goofed. Uh, that's next week's show. Oh boy. So anywho, joining me today is Toilet Genesis. Are you feeling it now, Norman? Not yet. Next week, probably. <laughs> How are you doing, man? I'm great. Yourself? I'm good. I'm just a bit tired, a bit sleepy. A lot of things to cover today. So it's like, whoa, so much work to do. It gets like that. So much news to cover. I know. And what, what about you, man? Oh, not much. Just celebrated a friend's birthday down at the pub. Oh. Cool. No drinks, no drinks to me though. Ah, alright. But was the cake? Oh, there was cake with M&Ms and ice cream. Ooh, nice. It was pretty good. Nice, thick, chocolatey cake. <laughs> awesome. So, you know who else had cake this week? I uh, know, Norman. Who else had cake this week? Princess Twilight herself, Tara Strong. She had her birthday. Ah. <laughs> Happy birthday, Tara. And, well, her husband gave her a nice looking cake. <laughs> oh, yes. Nice looking is one way to describe it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you, Craig? I approve of this cake. This is the kind of cake I would want for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So if you guys at home got no idea what we're talking about, um, links are in the show notes. So uh, how do I put this? Yeah, it's a very, very appealing cake. Um, very saucy too. So It, it definitely gets a, a nice solid George Takei's Oh My Yes, indeed. So yeah, we start off with pony cake and ay ay ay. Candle in the butt. Oh, oh no. But anywho, talking about candles in the butt, ain't that one of the D and D stories? <laughs> uh, oh, I should tell you about last night's D and D. Another time. Oh boy, They're talking about D and Ds. <laughs> Wait, that's a terrible segue. Uh, Tales of Equestria was previewed on Tabletop Weekly. So, what is Tabletop Weekly, you might ask? Well, it's a YouTube channel dedicated to all things tabletop from Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinders, Dune, whatever kind of tabletop exists, to, uh, My Little Pony, Tales of Equestria. So, the hosts had an advanced copy of the book and read through it and, well, kind of give a preview of said book to the audience at home, talking about the mechanics of the game and how it was in general. And if you are interested, I say this is a good watch. Um, this is, uh, what, I think about 20 minutes, was it? I'm not entirely sure. I didn't actually get time to sit down and watch it. Uh, I think it's 25 minutes, so. Yeah, but still, it's a really good watch. I won't say he went into detail, but yeah, um, he skimmed the top of the information that we really need. And what he said was, there's three type of characters, uh, Earth Pony, Pegasi, and Unicorn. And I think you can really uh, mess with the game if you're playing a griffin. Probably you can, <laughs> because it will be under the category of Pegasi. Probably, I don't know. If you want to do it, you can. <laughs> I imagine they will release uh, an advanced book for races like Griffins eventually. Well, they did have that, which we'll call this bestiary. Ah, true, true. So there's there. And talking about the bestiary, uh, we have also a list of the price for every product that's coming out. The main rule book, or as the D and D people will call it, the core rule book. Ah, <laughs> uh, somebody stopped me. Is going to be priced at thirty four dollars ninety five cents. Their first expansion, Curse of the Statue, is going to be at twenty five dollars ninety five cents, and additional friendship tokens and whatnot are going to be at six dollars ninety five cents. A pro tip on the friendship token: go to your local D and D and just buy your standard tokens. They're probably cheaper. Probably you can get some uh, decent uh, collections of tokens for like. Six bucks for like a, a container of like fifty to a hundred, depending on where you go. Mm-hmm. But the only reason why you want to buy this is just because of the really nice looking uh, dice pouch. Oh yes, that pouch that comes with it, the collector's bag. Yep, that looks really nice. That's I always recommend if you're playing a game like this, 
get a, a, a bag or a satchel like that to carry your dice in. In all honesty, you can even buy the Royal Pearl Pearl pouch online from their website. True. Just a pouch, no need to drink. So that would be cool. Like, you're a baller D20 person. Yeah! So anywho, um, they list down everything that's inside with descriptions and whatnot. So with the core rulebook, you'll get... Um, I, I don't know, I mean, it's just a book. I don't know what it's even trying to say here because 2 to 6 players, ages 8 to up, um, 30 to 180 minutes of play, My Little Pony team, friendship team, customizable, expandable RPG, game and world. So yeah, it's just a brief description of what the book can do. What's more interesting is the advance or curse of the statues expansion. Uh, it says here, one full color 48 page adventure book, one game master screen, six polyhedron die, 40 customizable character sheets. So yeah, that's what you really want. That's a lot of character sheets actually. Most games like the 5th yeah, edition D&D starter kit mm-hmm. doesn't come with any printed out character sheets, um, blank ones. It comes with six pre-generated characters on character sheets, hmm. but that's about it. So 40 blank customizable character sheets is a lot of character sheets to get, especially because considering the price of 26 bucks or 25 bucks or whatever it was, that's a lot of character sheets to get for that price. Hmm, true that, and each character sheet, well, you have three races, so that's 40 divided by three, so yeah. But in all honesty... Go to Kinko's or any photocopy shop and <laughs> photocopy those things. <laughs> because you know, I know that you're going to keep those in pristine condition. I've got a photocopier right in my room, so I'm fine. Yay. <laughs> so, on to the next news. So, uh, this is a strange one. It's strange in terms of what this is. So, apparently... Season 7 episode revealed. So, how is this going to be revealed? Well, Shout Factory, the guys who do the DVD for the MLP cartoon show, has stated out or have given their list of what is going to be on said DVD. Um, said DVD is going to have 5 episodes. In the DVD, you'll have uh, No Second Prances, Two Way, and Back again, part 1 and part 2. And two new episodes that are not released yet. Uh, titled Celestia's Advice and All Bottle Up. So yeah, this is one of those cases where... Huh, season 7 episode? That's interesting. Yeah, so we got two, two episode names. That's really interesting. Uh, especially considering Celestial Advice gives... Uh, it, it sounds a lot like we might get a, a possible Celestia episode out of that. There's a synopsis that they're, that's being posted up here too, but I think that's just for the DVD in general. Yeah, because if you take a look see at Sid DVD, it can be very, very general for how the introduction of Starlight Glimmer is. You could even say that it's for season seven, no, season, season 6 opener. Considering how Starlight centric this DVD is, I'm surprised it doesn't actually have that um that one other episode. Uh, what was it? She mind controls everyone. Um, uh, I forgot. Like episode. I, yeah, I can't recall its title, but I'm surprised that episode is not on this DVD. Yeah. Oh well. I, I guess it's one of those cases. But still, um, is it going to be released or not before season? 7 comes out, well, we do know that Season 7 is coming out in April. We mentioned that last week. So, well, we have to wait and see. Wait and see. And talking about stuff we said last week, oof, this is going to be a jam-packed episode about stuff. So, last week we mentioned about the My Little Pony movie, and I was asking, they they haven't revealed Michael Pena's character yet. And, (laughs) lo and behold, Sunday come along, and... Michael Pena's character is revealed. Okay. <laughs> As Grubber. Yes. What is Grubber? Oi. What is Grubber? I don't know. He has all these sort of appearance that make you, that can make you think of a lot of things. 
a, a wombat, maybe a hedgehog or something. It's not very clear. It might be some kind of fat dog. <laughs> oh boy! But still, um, beyond that point of I don't know, uh, we do see the full posture of the characters we were talking about. And remember when we mentioned that? Oh, we don't see the full poses for this character. We don't see the full character design for said character. Well, with any good tie-in movie, there's going to be toys. And there's a lot of toys. toys. We get. Yes, th- there's a lot of toys for this week. So I'm going to take it back slowly from the top. So remember Tempest, the unicorn, broken horn unicorn, very edgelordy? There's a toy of her. Toy of Edgelord McUni Mc, broke. I, I don't know. Yep. I had a better name than 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yep. But, but we see that she's in full armor. Yeah. One of the things I have to point out here is that said toys look like one of the custom ponies that one DeviantArt person is doing. Do they? I'm not familiar with whoever you're talking about, so I wouldn't know. It's hard for me to remember because there's a DeviantArt artist who do custom ponies. She does Bayonetta pony, the Last of Us ponies, and so on. And these are commissioned, by the way. And yeah, they're customizable, they really look good, and they're in the same vein. And what I mean by that is, they don't have the main that come with the standard toys. They're molded mains. Uh, you can say that they're similar to how the Funko toys are. Yeah. That's cool, because I like toys like this. If I have to do less management for them, like to keep them pretty, that's better. So as we go down, we get the Songbird Serenade, was it? Uh, yeah, Songbird Serenade, which is a character that will be voiced by Sia. Princess Skystar, and then uh, we appear to have all the main six as sea ponies. Yeah, yeah. And and Spike as a pufferfish. Yeah. Poor Spike. Just... He looks like a bad, bad Digimon design. Just a head with a, with a tiny tail. Yeah, and well, one more thing. We got Keeper. Ah, uh, yes. Did we get Keeper? Ah, uh, yes. Keeper looks nice. Yeah, and I have to mention this. Keeper, uh, who's the parrot or the bird thingy? Captain Castellano. Captain, yeah, I'm not even going to try to pr- pronounce that name until the movie comes out. Uh, Captain Castellano. And also Storm King, their toys are similar to the Guardians of Harmony toys, um, the Celestia and Discord and Nightmare Moon and even uh, Queen Chrysalis, those kind of toys, they're molded ones. So that looks cool. I have to say that, wow. Yeah, I'm very surprised with the, uh, the Storm King one. Because I assumed it was a he was a centaur, based on like the way his chest, arms, and uh, head were designed, and looked a lot like T Rex in the art from the character announcements. But now he has only two legs. Yeah, um, like I mentioned before, I I said that he might look like a, a satyr, a satyr, you know those things. Half goat men. Yeah. Yeah. Or a minotaur. Yeah, but you know, honestly, do you remember that one episode, that Pinkie Pie episode with the yaks? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, you remember that yeti? Well, it's not really a Oh, yeti. the yeti thing. Yeah, it looks like him. I forget his name. Does it? I would have to go back and look that up. Because uh, I'm trying to remember in my head, like, scenes, and he does look like this somehow. I mean, it's strange for me to say that, but yeah, I have a strong feeling that it's something similar. Because of his body posture, the furs and whatnot, and eh. I, I don't know. I just googled it quickly, and the the yeti thing looks more like some kind of big weird cat, like some sort of mutant mountain lion. Mutant mountain lion. That was season five, right? Uh, yes, yeah, season five. What was the episode called again? Uh, pa- I think it's party pooped. Party poop. Uh, let me see. Uh, I just googled MLP Yeti. Yeah, MLP Yeti. Uh, I I wish there's a very quick way to check the beast theory for um, MLP wikis, <laughs> but nah, it's, it's gonna be hard. But yeah, still, um, we got a lot of toys here, so yay! One toy even looked like Princess Celestia. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, it, but it's not. It's Queen Novo. 
So, yeah. I like the design of the Queen Novo toy. It, it looks nice. Yep. And Keeper. Keeper looks like... No, Keeper looks good. The Keeper toy looks, like, really, really nice compared to the rest. It doesn't give off the feel that it's a toy. It's more like uh, a general statuette that you'd put up somewhere. Yeah, it's similar to display. the Thunder King with the materials like that. Like, it's one of those toys. Yeah, it looks like it's generally higher quality than your, your standard playset stuff. Yeah, and it's for display, to be honest. But yeah, we also find out uh, now that we can see the full the full body also of uh, Captain What's Her Face <laughs> that she has a peg leg that appears to be made out of crystal, and I think we also have possibly a confirmation of what she is uh, just a parrot. <laughs> Yeah. The anthropomorphic parrot. Yep. And yeah. Which would explain the head feathers. Yep. And so, um, there's a post on the EQDs. Uh, I think Megan gave a brief description of each character. So, Caper. Caper is an icon artist, cat turned hero. Obviously. Uh, Tempest. A unicorn whose broken horn speaks of a troubled past. Uh, I'm Edge Lord. I hear my chemical romance every night. Uh. Songbird's Serenade, uh, the hottest musical act in Equestria. Yep, you remember uh, those? I, I suppose someone had to uh, step up and cover for Rara since she's clearly dropped the Countess Color Chura yeah. geek. And also Sapphire Shores. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> hmm. Here we go. Grubber, the hilarious bumbling sidekick to the Storm King. We'll be the judge of that. Yep, yep. And talking about the Storm King, the Storm King, big bad villain of the movie. You don't say. Oh, I didn't see that one coming, not at all. Yeah, I mean, like, you have Sabretooth play him. Like, hmm, I wonder if this is going to be a good guy. <laughs> and also Captain Kyle Kaliano, dramatic leader of the Pirate Pirate Crew. Yar, are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna finish that. <coughs> uh, Queen Novo, regal ruler of the sea ponies. <coughs> and Sky Star, her energetic daughter. I do hope that they're gonna say that one. Uh, because we... My friend is hoping for it. Yep, I, I... I have a friend, his OC is the sea pony. He's excited. He's <laughs> absolutely ecstatic about this. Oh man, I, I, I just want them to at least have a update cover of that song. <laughs> like, do a cover of that song. That's all they ask. And talking about songs, we're gonna have seven songs for this movie. So yay. I'm looking forward to it. Seven songs, that's good. That's one more song than most of the Equestria Girls movies, uh, which I think, aside from Rainbow Rocks, all had six songs each, if you don't count the credits song. Yeah, I mean, I'm double-checking my song list for the MLP music, but I think if you really consider the full-length song for, uh, what you might call this, the first movie, the first movie one was short. They started out very, very like, new, and they didn't really have a general idea of what to do. The first Equestria Girls movie only had five songs. That's including intro and outro. No, I think it had six. No, they had the opening uh, title. Anyway. If you're looking at the soundtrack, it the soundtrack is actually missing one song from the movie. Ah, all right. So that's okay. So plus one is six. Um, Rainbow Rocks has ten, including bonus track "My Music to My Ears." And I think there's a few missing, was it? One or two other songs which were from the promotional shorts that some of which I think were put onto the soundtrack for the third movie, except for one of them, which was my favorite, which was left out of the soundtracks entirely as yeah. well. And talking about the third one, um, you get ten songs, but three of those songs were the in-between before uh, the third movie. So yeah, two promotional short songs and a completely new song that was only released on those mm-hmm. and on the soundtrack. The last movie, the Fort Equestria Girl movie, only had six songs. Those movies were what, like, were 110 minutes each, so that's one and a, a little short, shy of two hours long each. Yeah, which is not bad. So I'm assuming, I'm personally assuming that the 
the big budget movie is going to be at least two hours to two and a half hours long. Nah, not two and a half hours. I see an hour and a half. An hour and a half to two hours. It's going to be at least an hour and 40 minutes to match the Equestria Girls films. Yeah, yeah. It it wouldn't be shorter than them. That's why I'm I'm assuming because it's a bigger budget, it's going to be at least two hours. Yeah, I, I agree with that one. I agree with that statement. My prediction would be an hour 30 to maybe two hours tops. It's, I think the songs will fit fit into the movie a lot better than they did in, uh, with the Equestria Girls movies, where the songs occasionally felt like they took up too much time or were too close together. At least the first movie had that. Yeah, but the first movie used that as a um, storytelling mechanic where it, well, kind of jumped from point A to point B in a flash. Instead of showing things go slowly, they used that as a montage to speed things up. Unfortunately, we don't have a list of uh, names for any of these songs. We just have a number. Yeah. Which is, which is a shame. If we had a list of names, we could confirm on whether or not we get a new version of the Sea Pony song. Yeah, you know what? That could be spoiler. So I, I don't really want to uh, delve into that deeper. But still, uh, we got character, character design, all that. And you know what? This is cool. Uh, one of the few things that I'm excited to see is the animation for... The new season because it's going to be running on Toon Boom now. And the ponies here look awesome. Their design has changed a lot. It looks so good. Mm-hmm. I'm expecting it to be so smooth. Yep. Like, I know people who they're probably going to find it hard to watch the original seasons after watching the new stuff. Yeah, but <laughs> it's going to be one of those things where us oldies who watch the Newer things are going to be like, oh, I, I, I can get used to this. And after a long time, oh, we got used to it and we, we go back. Oh my God, the, the old thing is so different. Oh, oh. Yeah, exactly. Video gamers get the same thing where we play a new game, then we go back to an old game and the graphics just, we, we can't stand it because the graphics are so old. Yeah, and then we demand HD graphics and uh, lo and behold, we get new uh, graphics and then People complain, oh, the newer graphics, they look terrible. Oh, the older ones, much better. Like, oh, nobody can satisfy you people. Oh, well. We just can't keep chugging forward with more seasons, with more uh, advances in animation. True, true. And talking about chugging forward, 2018, that's a long way to go. That's what, like eight months more? No. Uh, about ten months at this yeah, point. ten months. Ten months more. And guess what? We're getting season 8 next year. Uh, everyone's getting surprised by this. I, I'm not. I'm fully expecting this to run to like 10 seasons. Didn't we get a confirmation of we're getting another 8 more seasons out of I mean, I, I, if I remember right, they say 8 or 5 more seasons. And people were debating or people were questioning, is it 8 seasons? Or eight more seasons, or five seasons, or five more seasons. You, you, you get. The I, I think when season five was out, or around then, there was a confirmation of another five seasons, or rumors of such, and everyone was flipping out. But I, I remember distinctly for it during season three, or between season two and three, that there was rumors of ten. Uh, it being confirmed that they'll go up to season ten. So. We'll, we'll see how that goes. I fully expect it to, but we'll see how good the show remains at that point, if it gets that far. True, 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 true. So, like the post on EQD says, the ride never ends. Oh boy. Uh, as I keep telling people, you can't get off the ride unless the ride lets you off. Yep. But still, it's one of those cases where we're <laughs> we got more show to do, we got more content to do, and, well, as we... Finish with season 8 news. There's nothing more we can say besides we got more future news coming on. So that's still good. Um, as for season 7, I forgot to mention this in the previous show where, sorry, not really previous show. It was this show actually, but still season 7 is coming around in April and that's in tandem with one of the things that they're trying to do, which is I think they're trying to do cross media storytelling. So what they're doing here now is that they're trying to tell the backstory of a certain character 
before season seven starts. It's going to be related to the whole story. First, they're going to tell uh, a three-part story in the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic book, starting from issue 51 to 53, and continuing on to season 7. Then, at the same time too, I'm not 100% sure if this is related or not, but the final issue of Friends Forever, issue 38, is going to be Princess Celestia versus Princess Luna. Grudge match, I don't know, probably adult squabble. But yeah, that is going to be the final issue before it's being replaced with the Guardians of Harmony. So we'll get to see what they're trying to do now. Because if you notice here, there's a lot of cross-media thing going on. Yeah, they sounds a bit like they might be trying to... <laughs> take the comics and make the comics a bit more canon with some of the stories. Yeah, and that's one of the things where I was a bit shocked because the director, Jason Thiessen and so on, has always mentioned that show canon is tier 1 canon and whatever happens in the comics are tier 2. So that's why I've been wondering why now? I mean, it does make sense in a sense of it's making more sales, but in terms of storytelling, why now? I'd say it's probably mostly to do with sales, or maybe partly to uh, try and raise people's intrigue to watch the show more as well, Yeah, for those who only read comics. Probably, and I think vice versa at the same time too. Introducing people to the series, the cartoon series on the TV, and also the TV to the comics. But if you think about it, if you're reading the My Little Pony comics, you're obviously going to be watching the show and vice versa. Well, I'd say most people who are reading the comics watch the show. I wouldn't say any everyone who watches the show reads the comics because I don't read the comics. Yeah, true that, true that. But still, that's a really interesting thing going on there. Uh, I do hope it succeeds and I can't wait to read the issues. Um, issue 51 is coming out this month until it finishes in April. So that whole story kind of mixed well with what's happening for Season 7's uh, opener. I would say that it's going to be confusing to a lot of people who don't read the comics. If they don't cover it in the show as well, yeah. like a, a flashback or something for context. It will be very interesting to see what they're trying to do, though. Yeah, but still, that's going to be very confusing for people who totally don't read the comics. But you know what? Some media do it and it works, so I don't see why not here. They do it in Kingdom Hearts. Uh, yeah, but, but Kingdom Hearts is is a bit of a mess in that regard. Yep. And from what a friend of mine told me that it's all scripted out. It's all planned out. It's all part of the cockboard. Ah, <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. All the notes, all, all the string that leads from one bit to another. <laughs> yep. <laughs> kind of like what Saitoi did. Uh, well, you see the board at the end of uh, Rainbow Rocks in the post credit scene. Yeah, true that, true that. <laughs> uh, and talking about cork boards and speculations and getting things hype for stuff, Megan just tweeted something. Like literally, just a few minutes ago, she tweeted, Getting ready for fan media day at hashtag Hasbro Toy Fair. Get ready to board the hype train! I can't wait. Hype train. I, I'm on it. I bought my tickets. I'm a ride on the roof. You, you, so there's no tunnels. <laughs> I, you know what? I boarded the train in what? February of 2012. And I was thinking that, oh, you know what? This is going to be fun going to be a simple job, you know, talk about the news. How long could I possibly go? <laughs> uh, I don't think for long. Five years later, I'm still here talking about the ponies. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, boys. You get off and it lets you off. Nope. Like you mentioned before, you get on and you never get off. <laughs> hey! Uh. But I, I'm excited to find out what we, uh, what news that we're going to get more from the Hasbro Toy Fair. I've already heard that there is been rumor of a 
of the first official trailer for the movie oh. coming out this year uh, was at the Toy Fair, but wasn't shown in a way that uh, it could be put out uh, onto the internet for public. Not yet, at least. But yeah, I did read that too, where the first trailer was shown at the Toy Fair, and soon enough, it's going to be on the uh, My Little Pony YouTube page. So yeah, we don't really need to panic that much. It's going to be there. It's going to be there. I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Same here. And with that, we come to almost the end. So before we officially end, what has been entertaining us this week? For me, I'm going to say that I watched two movies this week. Very rare for me to do so. But those two movies are John Wick 2 and Lego Batman. So John Wick 2 is the sequel to John Wick 1, obviously. How do I even explain this to you all? John Wick is a story about revenge. Does that sound right, Twy? Yes, yeah, so the song about revenge and why you should never shoot a man's dog. Yeah, and steal his car and burn his house. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't be excessively mean to to a man who knows how to kill people really well. True, true. Yeah. I still haven't seen the movie. You haven't seen it? No, and John Wick 2, I believe, still does not have a release date for Australia, oh, and really? we don't get Lego Batman until mid to late March. Wow, okay. And they wonder why we pirate every movie that ever comes out. Yeah, well, honestly, yeah. Why so slow? Well, I mean, yay. But besides the point... I don't know, no one takes us seriously enough. <laughs> well, uh, some people say you're the dark souls of the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everything's trying to kill you. And, well, um, talking about Grim Dark, we got to go Batman, which is not Grim Dark. <laughs> I can't wait to watch that movie, but it's so far away. Yeah, but I have to say, it's worth the wait. You're going to enjoy it, man. Um, I've seen it, and all I have to say to you all who are interested is, brush up on your Batman lore. It doesn't have to be everything about... Uh, the Batman character? No, 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 no. It's anything to do with the pop culture, from all of his movies to all of the side gags, or just just all of it. Remember those. And well, a good tip is just take a look at what Lego has in their repertoire of toys. Probably you see a lot of cameos from other toy brands. So that's gonna be cool. I can't wait. So excited for that. And well. That's been my week. Um, movies has been entertaining my week. There you go, Batman and John Wick Chapter 2. What about you, Twy? What has been entertaining you for this week? Uh, not much. I slept a lot of this week. But I did manage to start watching the second season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I finished my latest video for YouTube, which is currently up on my channel. Ah, awesome. And ain't that something to do with the Crystal Gems? Yes, it's uh, my thoughts on Steven Universe. Ah, so Steven Universe has also been entertaining you. So uh, Yes, not specifically this week though, because of its rather spaced out uh, schedule. But I did watch the latest few episodes of Star vs. The Forces of Evil. Yeah, I've seen that too. And wow, <laughs> that one episode. Woo. Oh yeah, that most recent one. Oh, I'm I'm excited. Which one, Glossaric or uh, yes, the bounce yes, Oh one. yeah, Glossaric. Yeah, yeah. With, with what happens at the very end of that episode? Oh, yeah, that's. Cool. I can't wait to see more. Yeah, and if you guys out there are just wondering what to watch, we recommend Star vs. the Forces of Evil and Steven Universe. Um, don't care about the fandom because usually you watch shows because of the show. Uh, ignore the fandom. Not the pony fandom, though. You should totally watch us. <laughs> definitely, definitely get into the pony fandom. Yes, totally. Just, if, if there is a bit of a bit of uh, drama here and there, but you can ignore it safely. Yeah, just like what you're going to do with Steven Universe. It's all cool. Yeah. And if you haven't seen it, even though it's been finished for like a year now, also watch Gravity Falls. Oh, yeah, Gravity Falls is not a good one. Didn't they say they're going to do a season three? They wanted to do one, but then they uh, decided to end it with season two. Mm. I don't know if there's going if there's any rumors or anything going about about an extra season or a movie, but I would love 
love it if there was another season or even a movie. Oh, yeah, true, true. Oh, well, uh, let's keep whatever we're watching later for next week's show. And for now, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can send them to at mbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Show, and my Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And Twy, where can they reach you, man? I'm on Twitter at Midnight underscore Pint. I almost forgot my Twitter for a second there. Awesome. I'm also on Facebook as Double Pint Productions and YouTube as Two Pints Please and Twilight Genesis on both Film Fiction and DeviantArt. All right, all right. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvaLive.com. Also do subscribe to our newest well, I see newest, but this has been going a while now. So, do subscribe to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Songs, and probably Twy here in the future, where we talk about pony episodes, comics, movies, and anything in between, from talking about video games, movies, to general discussion about either ponies or characteristics of other shows. Probably, I don't know. Um, this week, what you guys going to be listening is about, well, me and Silver talking about video games. Oof, I have to put a disclaimer here. Um, this episode was recorded on January 15, this year. And... Because of Valentine's Day and how things were going, things got flipped, turned upside down. Eh? I see what you did there. <laughs> so that's what you guys are going to be getting this week. Um, other than that, we have a Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the MBS show. A dollar will give you guys full access to whatever I put up there. And a huge thank you. $5 will get you, well, full access, a thank you, and you can tell us what to talk about in terms of, hey, if you want us to talk about Steven Universe, we can. If you want us to talk about the MLP movie in depth or give theories or whatever, like throw them at the wall, we can too. Five bucks really helps a long way. And talking about the Patreon, I would like to thank my supporters, which is Twilight Genesis, thank you, and Lurker Cat. So thank you, you guys, for supporting the show because it really means a lot. Thank you, guys. No worries. Take my money. <laughs> uh, I will. Thank you. Um, other than that, um, I don't know. I'd be, I, I, me and Lurk did this one thing and probably we'll stick it off on the Patreon for funsies. And if people do like it, we'll do more. And that's me and her doing a cover of Escape from the City um, from Sonic Adventure 2. I liked it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I think it was terrible. <laughs> but, um, well, we, we can try to do something else, but who knows? We'll, we'll see. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Twilight Genesis. And we'll guys catch you next week for the real fifth year anniversary. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I've been recording this for five years now. Ah, uh, it's getting on. I know, I know. Five years, and now we get a full theatrical release of a movie. Not Equestria Go. Oh. Anyway, see ya. Bye.